Okay. All right, do it to it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the weekly TSC call. I think you all know that judging by the list of participants, this is a public meeting. Everybody's welcome to join in and contribute. There's two conditions, though. You need to be aware and lead by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is being currently displayed, and then the code of conduct that you all love and uphold, of course. So, all right. So we actually have kind of a different agenda this week. So I'm looking forward to the discussion. First, let's start with the, the announcements. We'll start with the reminder. I don't know if we need to spell it out, but there's the newsletter. Please take advantage of it. The staff keeps scrambling, begging for content. It all depends on us to help and chip in. I don't know, actually, the, the MEA, I don't know if it's still relevant. I kind of copied that over from last week. Is there more to be said on that one? For the global forum? No, I think we're in, I think we're in good shape. Okay. Um, we'll reach out to individuals who haven't responded directly. And people who haven't registered yet should definitely do so and help by cons by uh, you know spreading the word. There's a is convenient link that was provided to us, which allows you to quickly uh, tweet about it and you know let all your followers uh, be aware. And then, so I wanted to highlight two new activities that are kind of starting or restarting. The first one is with regard to the blockchain. Oops, sorry. Let me get this talk out of here. Just hold on. Sleepy dogs decided to get up now. Yeah, sorry about that. So the first one is blockchain interoperability. So it's definitely a hot topic, obviously, because you all know we have had the Cactus project going on for a while with basically two different approaches that kind of seeded this work, one from Accenture, the other from Fujitsu. And um, then recently IBM launched a, a new uh, lab with a new approach called Weaver. We had a presentation actually on this call a couple of weeks ago or so. And then uh, there's actually another company. I don't know if we can give the details, Brian, but there is another lab that's going to come in that you know takes a different approach and so that's actually at least three different you know efforts in the same space of interoperability and i you know we were having some uh, out, you know a sideline uh, discussion about this and i said and and quite frankly you know everybody thinks they have a better approach than the others but when you start digging it's not always obvious as always there are pros and cons to every approach and there is sometimes some misunderstanding of you know what really uh, each approach entails, and so I felt like it would be good to you know make start an effort where we try to draft a little bit of a comparison between the different approaches, and of course it's kind of like you know uh, it, it can be difficult. People are become emotional about their own uh, approach, but I think we're all adults and can. Uh, objectively uh, kind of look at the different aspects, maybe based on different dimensions, having some kind of a table. And so we're discussing doing this. And then Brian said, you know what? I think it would be good to actually leverage the architecture working group to get that discussion going, rather than doing that in some kind of, you know, ad hoc, uh, ad hoc uh, group. So this is an invitation for everybody interested in uh, interoperability to join the architecture working group or have a look. There is the link on the agenda will bring you to the web page, which allows you to subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you access to the archive and all that stuff. And um, so when we actually brought that up, the architecture working group has been dormant for quite a while. And uh, to the point where I wasn't even sure who was officially the chair anymore. Uh, 
but um, the they responded they say no we're still here and happy to pick up that work and uh, vpn actually said we had started working on interoperability so we'd love to you know resurrect this work and work with the rest of the community of this topic so i th think this is really cool it's very promising there's definitely a lot of interest and hopefully we can uh, have a fruitful discussion that will lead to better understanding of the pros and cons of the different approaches and uh, and hopefully lead to some collaboration beyond that that would you know maybe where there's some common code that could be pulled out of the project and shared among the different projects so that was the announcement regarding this is there more you want to add uh, brian uh, just that the uh, um, the other contribution coming in, uh, I mean, the, the, the company's name, you can find it on the, the, the thread that we started on the architecture working group mailing list. Uh, but the uh, interesting thing about it is that it implements uh, connectors to uh, a, a protocol called IBC, the Interblockchain Communications Protocol, which uh, is part of the, the, the Cosmos network kind of thing. But it also, I mean, arguably is emerging as uh, uh, one of a, a set of interoperability specs uh, on the kind of public blockchain side. So um, in terms of weaving our stuff together with what's going on beyond Hyperledger, it could be a pretty interesting thing. So uh, just if, if interoperability is on anyone's mind um, I, uh, and, and you know, priority for anybody participating in the conversation would be cool. Um, it might still mean that there are three different interoperability projects living at Hyperledger in the future, uh, um, but at least it would be a way to clearly distinguish them uh, from each other. Uh, and ideally there are opportunities to combine code efforts in some places because more eyes fewer lines of code always a good thing all right thank you so you've been informed please join in and then uh, there's another point david you added that i'm going to let you talk to it this david is a Boston. similar story to the architecture working group you know the performance and scale group hasn't been that active recently at least in english oh. Um, so I'm just working with that group to try to reactivate things. Also working with the technical working group China, which has been doing a lot of work around performance, although not within the performance and scale working group. So they're looking at how to combine efforts and collaborate and move over some of the conversations that have been happening in the technical working group China in Chinese, but make that more available to an English audience in the performance and scale working group. So we're just working through the logistics of when to try to do a new meeting. So if you're interested, join the mailing list and there'll be details posted there soon. We're not 100% sure if they do want to fully reboot or not. The, the initial thinking is have one or two meetings, see if there's interest or not, and then uh, uh, go from there based on the response. So if you are interested, join the list, there'll be more details soon. All right, thank you. Any questions about any of the above or any other announcements? Seems to be a day rich in announcements. So don't refrain yourself if you feel like making some announcements. Maybe you heard about Ryan is a Iceland trip. <laughs> All right, if not, let's move on. So I uh, carried over the Q1 uh, Hyperledger Explorer report that was kind of late to come in last week. So I want to make sure if anybody had, you know, uh, anything they wanted to raise, they would have that opportunity. I didn't see any comments to the, you know, that would uh, make me believe that we need to have a discussion, but this is your opportunity. Okay, if not, then we just, uh, I mean, we actually received it a couple of days ago, Stephen Curran uh, posted the Hyperledger Indie report. And uh, it's the same, I haven't seen, I mean, they do talk about the, the main item is CICD work. They, they brought that up in the question issues for the TSC, but I think it was mostly just about highlighting what's going on there. I don't think it's a call for action from Merpont. That's certainly an area I personally would love to see more collaboration on. Um, I was talking to another project 
in Hyperledger and uh, they were trying to sort out their CI CD and they were unaware that the rest of the projects were either moving to GitHub Actions or, or that that's like the preferred place to do it, um, which was a surprise to me. But I would definitely love to see more inter-project uh, work when it comes to CI CD and best practices with GitHub Actions. All right. Any comments or questions from anyone? All right, if not, we can uh, move along. So we have a proposal to make a decision on. So we talked about that and Tracy went ahead and forged this proposal to add a state to the life cycle where we could uh, declare that the project is in a dormant state. And that would apply, for instance, for the quilt project where they have disclosed that they don't expect to do anything for a while. So I hope everybody had a chance to look at it. Is there any questions? Or are we ready to make a call? Or Tracy, do you want to highlight any aspect of it? Uh, I think I highlighted in the overview the the two kind of pieces that you know change from previous decisions that we may have made. One, the addition of the dormant state, and then the second one is that we had previously said that all uh, movement through the life cycle will be forward. Um, this actually adds the line backwards from the dormant state back to the incubation state. So. Um, I think those are kind of the two highlights. Um, I think the other thing that came up in the comments was the fact that you can move directly to end of life state, um, which was what uh, Hart had requested in the chat. So that's why that's there. And then secondly, um, Dano, you had a question regarding uh, whether or not each state transition requires an act of the TSE. And I believe the answer to that is yes. So that was be, that, that was actually the one thing I wanted to ask about. It, you know, the proposal doesn't explicitly say how this gets triggered, how you move from, you know, wherever you are to dormant and out of dormant to wherever. I think it'd be good to put a sentence saying, you know, by TSC's decision or something like this. Sure, yeah, we can do that. And that leaves it open enough that, you know, it's it could come from the project itself, it could come from TSC or anybody who could bring it up the issue and say, hey, you know, um, I think, you know, this should be moved to dormant state, but at least, you know, it's clear that it's, it's up to the TSC to make that call. And I don't know that we need to be more formal than that. Otherwise, I think that would do it. Nathan. Nathan. Um, I was just going to mention that I, I, I agree. We don't want to probably be any more formal than what we have here. It is um, technically probably possible that someone could take a deprecated or an end of life product project and make a new proposal for a new pro pro project that became its successor. Uh, and used its uh, code or reputation, but we would expect that would be a, a very exceptional case, and then the proposal would uh, in include justification or reasons why that was what was supposed to happen. So, you know, while it's, I think from a process standpoint, everything always moves forward. If someone's worried that, that, that a project would somehow get stuck or, you know, abandoned through some official channel of Hyperledger, I, I think that as a TSC, we would be prepared to consider anyone who wanted to move forward technology that has been at Hyperledger currently or in the past. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I was attending a, was it a meetup the other day and somebody talking about Daml and how Daml was a good uh, replacement for the people who were still missing Composer. And in the chat, somebody said, yeah, it's a pity, you know, we should restart Composer. And I say, well, nobody's stopping you. <laughs> You know, if people want to restart Composer, they could, right? And I completely agree with what you said, Nathan, that 
you know, finally somebody could pick up the code. They could, you know, fork it, put it wherever, start working on it. And they could also come back to the TSC and say, hey, we want to start a new project, which is like, like you said, the new composer kind of thing. I, you know, there's nothing that stops that from happening. I don't think we need to say anything about it. It's the nature of open source from that point of view. It's like, if people want to do it, they can. All right, so Dano, you had this uh, question. Does the what we said satisfy your question? Answer your question? Yeah, I just thought it was worth clarifying that because yeah. that's the way I read it. Everyone's in agreement with it, but sometimes these things can get weird, so. No, I agree. I, I, and that's why I think we should add that sentence somewhere in there. All right, any other questions or comments? Or are we ready to make a decision? I'm not, sorry, this is Andrew. Um, yes. I mean, I, I like the automata, it's very colorful, I must say. Um, <laughs> but are, are the rules clear for, the, for each transition? from one state to another state are all then well-defined. And uh, the, so people understand what it means to transition from one state to another under, um, so it's all well-defined. So as, as, I mean, there are some that are clearly defined in excruciating details, right? Like getting out of incubation, especially, um, I think the, like entering incubation is well defined too. I think we've also defined the deprecated and end of life pretty well because we went through this exercise with Composer. So the dormant stuff is what we are adding now. And what we just said is we don't need to be very detailed about the mechanism other than say, you know, it's up to the decision of the TSE. We, it, it can be brought up by anybody and the TSE will look at it. Then, then you are saying that there is a state that is not well defined. It's not defined completely yet. I, I feel just taking a decision on something that is a half naked, though, but maybe just me and uh, just, uh, just this. If we, everything is well defined, uh, the, I'm fine with the, with the automata. So you're not satisfied with just leaving it open to the TS? You know, because that's, uh, if we can be more precise, I would appreciate, but of course, uh, the, the TSC, I guess it's uh, as always the, the last word. Yeah, that's the catch all. I, I give it to you that it's a bit hand waving, but I mean, if you think about the quilt uh, use case, because that's the one, you know, is triggering all of this. They basically volunteer to be in a state like this, right? So they wouldn't, there isn't much controversy in this case. They come to us, say, hey, watch out. We're not going to do anything for a while. Maybe there's a state, I don't know where we should be put. And so now our answer will be fine. We'll just mark you as dormant, no problem. Let us know when you wake up. So if, right, if you could go back to the uh, wiki page, I just updated it to add the statement in the uh, description piece. Uh, so yeah, scroll down right here. Uh, so I added the second sentence. The TSC will make the decision as to whether a project will move to the dormant state upon request. Very good, all right. I'm fine. All right, thank you. Nice live editing, Tracy. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, it sounds like everybody is satisfied. Let's go for a vote. Does anybody want to second it? Sure. Second. Second. All right, we heard at least two, so that's good. I second as well. All right, don't throw more, we're good. Um, so who wants to, Oppose the proposal. Nobody. Anybody wants to be marked as abstaining? Nobody. All right. Everybody in support say aye. 
Bye. 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 And I will, I'll note that Gary used the green check mark technology. So. Well, that's cool though. Okay. We've Motion tried passes. different versions of this, but it doesn't matter. Tracy, um, do you want to do a PR to the TSC documentation or do you want me to do it or how do you want to do that? Yeah, I'm happy to do it, right? Okay, thanks. Yep. All right. So that'll be the action item. So don't close it yet, uh, Rai. I, what I do is I mark it as approved, but then I wait for the action item to have been carried out so that we, to close it. So it's still kind of pending and we don't lose track until it's been reflected in the documentation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's move on. So we have a couple of discussion items that were brought up by uh, the staff. I mean, David was the vehicle, but I suppose, uh, um, you know, uh, from what I understand, there was discussion within the team and in preparation to the global forum, they were looking back at the member summit out of the member summit, which happened a few, quite a few months ago now, um, there were a bunch of proposals that uh, were brought up by the participant. And two of them were specifically, you know, targeted to the TSC. And they came to ask me, what has the TSC done about any of this, if you have done any? And I said, well, I'm not sure we've done anything specific, but I'm happy to bring it up to the group and uh, have a discussion about it. So this is what it's about. It'd be good to take a position on those issues. So let's start with the first one. So we were actually you know, asked to form a working group for updating the technical scope of Hyperledger to discuss and recommend action. And especially there were a lot of discussion about going beyond blockchain and saying, well, you know, there's a lot of discussions about decentralized web, multi-party systems in general, and maybe, you know, we should allow ourselves as an organization to, you know, entertain activities in that space. But it's kind of a change of the charter. Um, and I actually, this would have to be my understanding, and Brian can tell me if I'm wrong, but is that it would have to be endorsed by the governing board but the governing board is not going to tell us what we should do, but so we should, you know, come up with a proposal. And so there could be a working group or, you know, it could be a task force kind of thing. It doesn't have to be a long lasting uh, group, but that actually focuses on what that would mean. Any reaction? What I'll is just the framework phrasing of the charter? Okay, sorry. That Hello, can you repeat that? What is the current phrasing of that section of the charter? I think that might be instructive. Ah, a good question. Brian. Pulling that up, but uh, uh, it's it's generally around enterprise blockchain. Uh, uh, let me get the charter link on the Hyperledger website. And drop the link here. Uh, I'll drop it in the TSC. Uh, chat and uh at the very top it says the mission of the hyperledger project i mean there's a lot to update in the charter frankly because it hasn't been amended for uh, uh about a year and a half um but but actually this stretch i don't think it's been amended since it was adopted uh in january 2016 which is create an enterprise grade open source distributed ledger framework and code base upon which users can build robust industry specific applications, platforms, hardware systems to support business transactions. Uh, uh, and then a technical community to support that. Um, so so there, it, it, you know, it, it does focus on distributed ledger framework. It doesn't, uh, it's their use of the word blockchain anywhere in this uh, as a thing there is, let's see. Um, yes, focused on blockchain and shared ledger use in the B part, uh, one, one B, and then I think somewhere else, but I'm not sure. Um, 
so it's not it's not too closely tied um you, you know it's it's a uh, uh, you know it, it has been brought up that the term multi-party systems is a way of kind of further further distinguishing that um you know that there's a universe of different ways to build these kinds of systems uh, and some of the folks building them kind of sometimes recoil at the word blockchain um, but not to talk about it in a marketing sense just to say we might be open to things uh, uh, that uh, to, to, to technologies that we wouldn't necessarily call classic blockchain technologies or, or DLT technologies. Um, you know, to some degree, that might be a self, you know, the fact that we haven't seen those kinds of things show up yet might be uh, characteristic of just the fact, way that we present ourselves to the world. Um, uh, you know, it's not like there's a big backlog of projects that would come in if we were to make a change like this, but um, uh, it does, it, you know, I think the open question that came up during the, the, the member summit was, uh, are we are we are there is there a broader universe of different options out there uh, and something that an updated mission statement um, might uh, actually help us recruit right so Hawk does his hand up sure I mean at least the way I read the charter right now it sort of already encompasses all of these things like blockchain and distributed ledger have sort of been defined to mean basically everything that's sort of distributed. Um, so if I were closely reading this, if, if I were just reading this charter and sort of we at, you asked me, you know, if these things on the agenda item would be included, I would say they probably would be included under the existing charter. Now people might disagree with the reading, um, but you know, it, it, it sort of seems like they would already be included. Um, that being said, you know, updating the charter um, probably makes a lot of sense. There have been a number of cases where we've had issues with the charter and if changing the words of the charter help us pull in more people or more contributions, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's the, I mean, so the request came to us, right? From the like members and uh, obviously our options are, you know, we could just say, no, thank you. We don't think we need to change anything. It probably will feel, you know, that we're not being very responsive to their to what they're telling us. But the other alternative, the alternative is we 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 say, okay, let's create a group of people interested to have a look at this, scrub it a bit, and possibly make it a bit more open-ended in a more obvious way rather than. Yeah, if I can, you know, pause between the line, I think it actually allows us to do a bit more, but make it actually more, you know, evident that yeah, there are other things that fill in that that fall into the scope, without any kind of uh, you know anybody feeling we are playing games with the charter. <laughs> Um, can I jump back in and say yeah. that you still have uh, your hand up? I was going to ask if it was, if, you know, forgotten or go ahead. No, no, no. Um, if we may also want to update the charter to sort of reflect uh, the reality of, of what we've become. Um, so, you know, just reading this, you know, the, the first line is create an enterprise grade open source distributed ledger framework, singular. Yeah. Um, so like maybe we should update this to sort of reflect the the changes in vision that the project has had um so like the greenhouse or, or whatever we're calling it now um and, and and all that kind of stuff so there is a group that's um been meeting to revisit the the greenhouse graphic and the the you know kind of core white paper for the project maybe combined with what, what one thing that could be proposed would be that that group also consider uh, updates to the charter uh, to reflect uh, both the current nature and also uh, uh, potentially design, you know, where it could go. And maybe it is to include other terminology that, that helps it speak beyond ledgers and blockchain. Is that putting too much on that group? Well, <laughs> let's ask Ellen. I mean, she's leading that effort. Uh, I mean, of course, you're a boss, so you could tell her just do that. But <laughs> maybe she has an opinion. <laughs> Ellen? Yeah, hi. Um, 
I'm sorry. Can you can you repeat the, the focus of the question? <laughs> so, uh, Helen, the, the group that's been formed to revisit the uh, white paper and the the greenhouse um, the website. The, the, and, and the website um, in, in the proposal as, as well in order to address this topic that came up from uh, last year's member summit is, you know, should the charter at the very least the very beginning of the charter, um, which spells out the mission for for Hyperledger uh, it should be updated to reflect the current nature, but also, exp you know, see if there's ways to nudge it just beyond a focus on blockchain and DLT. Um, uh, and uh, uh, whether the group that's been formed to work on that updating of the white paper and greenhouse graphic, uh, whether they could take that that on as well, um, or if that'd be too much. <laughs> oh well, yeah, I think um, it might be it, uh, just just because we're. Um, yeah, I would say that it might be a separate conversation. Um, and I mean, Arno has been there in all of our. In, in you know the, the previous meetings uh, to discuss the, the the updates to the greenhouse and the um, the white paper and you know they're very much focused on how to convey the in uh, the ecosystem environment that Hyperledger conveys today. Um, in terms of rewriting the charter, I, I would feel like there would need to be kind of a, a maybe even if it's the similar same people, we would need to um, kind of a, a accompanying it with some different meetings, meeting times, and uh, reframe the focus for, for something like this. But um, yeah, I my um, unless we're ready to take on more work, which, you know, I can't speak for the whole the whole group, um, I would say that maybe adding a, having a, a different community uh, group put together to, to work through these items uh, might be in order. Yeah, so and I'll add to that. We're, we're, we're here, Helen and I and Rye and everyone else on staff, we're here to serve you all, all right? So to some degree, you know, tell us how you'd like to structure it, but it does sound from Helen's response like uh, having a separate small group meeting to focus on this. Um, it, it can be separated from the work on updating the white paper and, and greenhouse graphic, uh, and also might, even though there's overlap, might in, um, involve some new voices. So um, yeah, that'd probably be, I don't know, it might be a task force kind of thing? Yeah, I think so. I so think I'm, so, because this is something that should be time bounded and all that. So work, that was the difference. We When we introduced task force, we said task force, they have a clear agenda to produce something specific within a certain time frame, while working groups can be long in lasting and not have any specific output. So I think so that, that falls into the task force uh, bucket. Could I could I ask? Um, and I don't have any visibility into this. Um, would it be possible for us staff to get a set of members who are not actively involved in the technical goings on to work like three or four representatives to work with our three or four representatives? To, to kind of clarify what it is exactly they want, or is that a terrible idea? No, I don't think that's a terrible idea. And it touches a little bit on the second point, but the, the only problem with that is, you know, that I see is that members who are not actively developing projects, they can dream every goal they might, you know, they, they want, but, it doesn't mean much in my opinion, unless there are people where, you know, there's a actual buy-in from developers. That's the only danger. You might have a mission statement that's not in line with what people who are actually writing code are interested in doing. Then it kind of defeats the point because of course you might think, no, it is going to invite others that will be interested in that. Um, yeah, I, I think the members asked, <laughs> phrased it this way, asked the TSC partly to, to pass the baton, but also to ground it in um, what the TSC and, and the technical community really thinks is right. 
you know, um, rather than projecting. I mean, these are not disjoint groups. So many of the all of you are also <laughs> uh, hyperledger members. So so didn't want to like, you know, you know, there's not a dichotomy here. Um, I think I think setting this up as a task force, its work will be public, you know, public facing anyways. Um, having uh, folks participate who are not technical might actually be advantageous. Might might there might be some good things to it. But uh, um, uh, you know, I think it really is. What does the technical community think? Um, an update to the mission save it might look like perhaps other parts of the charter beyond this first paragraph as well um the first stanza about about the mission um maybe that's the mission of the task force itself is propose updates to the mission uh, primarily and secondarily other parts of the charter that could be updated looking at other charters of other linux foundation projects uh, or or even other open source projects too yeah, I agree. And I think we can make, I mean, back to what you were saying, right? I, I don't think we need to make it exclusive one way or the other. We should, in fact, make it open, not, you know, to everybody to participate. And I think, you know, you guys can help us reach out to the other members and make sure they're aware there's this opportunity to participate. And um, hopefully we'll get some of the people who actually motivated this this proposal in the first place from the member summit, right? There were people who were vocal and say, yes, this is important. So hopefully they will step up and join the task force and can help us shape this. And from a process point of view, Brian, was I right in when I said, basically all we can do is come up with a proposal that the governing board will then have to decide on? Yes. Yeah, okay. that's, that's, that's accurate. Um, I think anything well argued is likely to be uh, accepted. You know, anything that's not a dramatic departure, <laughs> we're going to get into gambling or something. Yeah. Um, I, I, no, it, it, yeah, it would be um, that 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 yeah. The, the governing board is what approves changes to the charter. All right, sounds good. Any other opinions? Anybody? I just wanted to uh, jump in and offer a little bit of context as well. So. Um, these proposals came out of different sessions at member summit um, and the first one specifically was out of a session focusing where the main topic was anticipating and planning for the long term future of DLT so um, it's sort of with that overall topic in mind that this proposal came out and then the second one. Um, is along the lines of the effort with the um, uh, white paper, which was um, the overall topic of that session was building a better greenhouse. And so um, that was the overall topic of that session and this proposal came out of that session. All right, second. thank you, Karen. So otherwise, anybody thinks it's a bad idea to create this task force to work on the mission statement in the charter and possibly have us, you know, scrub the rest? Because if not, I think we'll, you know, I'll consider this is agreed upon. And then the next question becomes, okay, who is in charge of setting that up? Is the staff going to drive this, Brian? Uh, if we set this up as a task force, it'd be great to have a uh, chair, uh, you, you know, um, or kind of somebody leading that from the community, but we'd certainly facilitate and support. Do we have a volunteer among the TSC members to kind of chair this task force? It's a really powerful position. <laughs> Actually, it kind of is when it comes to the mission, like, okay. Um, I would just, be, I'd be happy to help uh, whoever is, is sharing. So if that helps. You, <laughs> yeah, we will, we will for sure. I don't see anybody jumping in to chair though. I mean, it shouldn't be a big job, right? It's They're not. So I feel there could still be overlap between um, the task force, which is set up to redesign the white paper and because there could be overlapping topics. Um, yeah, uh, we would present. Yeah, um, but uh, I think having them be separate task forces and uh, efforts would be is where we're heading. Yeah. Why now? Everyone's busy. Yep. 
<laughs> I mean, I could bring it to the task force and have them. I would just hate to have add more work to them without having consulted them, you know, if that makes sense. So, I mean, what we could do is I could bring this item, say, you know, this is something that is was discussed in the task force in the TSC. Um, is this something we, we want to take on? Is there a group of us that, you know, want to continue forward with some more, um, you know, like a subgroup of the current task force or would that just complicate things? No, I think that's a good idea. I mean, there's some value in leveraging the group we already have, but uh, yeah. and, you know, for, for me, I would participate either way. <laughs> so it's kind <laughs> of convenient if it's within the same group I'm already in. So, uh, but uh, I, it, it hot. Yeah, I'm also in that group. I'm not sure we necessarily need another group. Um, I think the charter changes are going to be probably a lot more controversial than some of the greenhouse changes. Or even if they're not controversial, they're, they'll sort of need more uh, approval. Um, but it would make sense for that group to sort of issue a recommendation as to maybe general ways they think the charter should change, um, even if that sort of gets wordsmithed uh, by others. The other thing is, is there anyone on the board who would be willing to, to sort of work on this while it's in progress? Um, it would probably be used, since the board ultimately has to approve, uh, it would probably be useful if someone from the board was involved in the process. Yeah, uh, I'll offer to go recruit somebody from the board to help uh, help with this. I can't, you know, say for sure that you know person X will do it, but um, I can think of people I would recruit to help with this. All right, I think that's a good uh, that's a good way for, to to I mean a good thing to pursue for now. It actually gives something to move forward to, and if it doesn't work out, if we still can't find anybody, well, we we'll, uh, we'll have to advise and figure out another way. But I'm happy with that. Okay, well, uh, we, so we want to form this task force then and, and we will yeah. recruit for participants on the task force and, and, and then recruit for a chair among those participants. Yeah, and uh, I mean, since we are, you know, we, are, we have said we need to open this up, not just to the TC or even the governing board, you know, there may be volunteers outside of these groups, you know, to yeah. chair this, I don't know. So can we okay. put the action item on the staff to kind of you know spread the word that we are trying to set up this task force and looking for somebody to lead it see if we sure. can find out here sure. maybe yeah. we should also ask the marketing working group because i believe some of these questions were brought up by them as well yeah we have our next uh, marketing committee meeting next week i can definitely um recruit from that uh that pool as well Okay. All right. So I just want to make sure the soul of the mission is firmly planted in the, the technical community, you know, yeah. um, and the maintainers. We, we, we can't have just the marketing folks run this. This would just. Not that there's anything wrong with with marketing people. We're all we're all in marketing at some point, <laughs> some, in, some, in some ways. Yep. And yeah, but uh, this is this is really the identity of the project, you know. Yeah. I mean, of, uh, I, no matter what, I think, you know, once the task force comes up with something, the, first, there will be some TSC members, I hope, participate in the effort. And then we'll bring it to the TSC for review, discussion, maybe refinement, and then go to the governing board once we are satisfied. That's kind of the chain yeah. I'm foreseeing. Okay. All right. Thank you. So now let's go to the second point which kind of, I have to admit, made me smile when I read it, right? And I'll tell you why, because it says, um, you know, so first it, it asks a bunch of questions, totally reasonable, like should convergence be a goal? Should interoperability be a goal? But then where, what amused me was the, you know, uh, the word <laughs> we should require, and I'm like, well, good luck requiring anything in an open source project. You know, we've seen it all along. We've been, I mean, even in the TSE, we've been from the very beginning, we've been saying, yeah, we should have more collaborations between the projects, but there's no way we can, we can force the projects to do it. There were some collaboration that happened when people saw a benefit in doing so, 
and that's the extent of it. So personally, I think it's probably not, you know, well worded from that point of view, but so I wanted to open it. They, they maybe still a way around that, you know, that's not kind of naive and saying we can require anything from developers. When it comes to, again, to the direction of the projects and collaboration with others, Brian. I would, uh, and it's hard with just 12 minutes left in the hour uh, to get into a deep conversation on this. So there might be something we, we want to punt to another, another call, but, um, you know, maybe the thing to do is to have a group that looks at how do other open source communities work with this and um, how successful are they at, at um, you know, managing those, those conflicts and, and, and the like, you know, just a, a group to kind of drop a, a survey, you know, or just kind of some comparison chart, you know, looking at CNCF and Apache on one end of the spectrum, looking at the Ethereum ecosystem and how they drive conversions around, you know, their uh, uh, things that bind them, even though there is optionality and, and differences of opinion and, and, and choice, you know, where's the line with that? Perhaps looking at other technical communities, like how much does convergence pay off? Um, how much versus how much does optionality pay off? And, and maybe just make it like a, um, a kind of a learning process that might eventually come up with recommendations on, you know, when, when have communities placed requirements uh, on on code basis, you know, and, and then come back to the TSC with kind of here's here's what seems to work elsewhere. All right, that's an interesting take. And David, I sorry to put you on the spot, but I thought because so you guys understand. I mean, David brought that to me, and I kind of expressed what I said earlier in email, and David responded that I thought he had some interesting. Uh, point to your emails. Do you want to kind of bring that up here? Well, sure. I mean, this could be an opportunity. I mean, I do think that uh, um, in general, not everybody necessarily understands uh, uh, to your point about maybe how the dynamics of an open source community works. This could be an opportunity perhaps to uh, um, share a little bit more about, you know, how do you make an impact in an open source project? You know, if you want to move the project in a certain direction, perhaps we could provide some more guidance and education on that and, and maybe use that as a, you know, opportunity to invite people to, to get in if there are people interested in this. Um, you know, I mean, this, for those who weren't at the member summit, this was something that was on the top of many people's minds, you know, is that an indication that there might be people there who would help if they had more of an idea about what the, the, you know, next steps were to to make some of these things happen. So, um, if that's what you were referring to, are in my email. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that was my thought. You know, is this maybe a way to not necessarily turn it around, but you know, offer an invitation? Like, yes, this sounds great. The TSC welcomes this. The TSC, you know, you know, if you want to have some of these things happen, the TSC is here to support you. And these are the these are some of the ways that you could show up and and help help make these things happen. Yeah. All right, thank you. Any other reactions, comments? You know, for me, it's kind of, you know, my initial reaction is like, oh, here we come, here we go again. It's kind of like the long-term, uh, was it long-term agenda issue, which we just closed like last week which raises the biggest question of all, which is how does that all come together in one way and what can we do to force this convergence? And, you know, I, I'm like shrugging when I see this thing, I'm like, yeah, we are going to create a group. They are going to go over the same thing. I mean, there was a link from this issue, by the way, from the, the architecture working group, which had made some very keen observations on the states of the Hyperledger organization and all the different projects and just kind of saying, yep, that's just the way it is. <laughs> and um, I, I'm not sure there's much we can do or hope to do that would force a change in that way. 
to me, this goes back to what, I mean, you shared the story earlier about going to that meetup where people talked about, oh, hey, it would be great if Compo Composer bit came back. So, I mean, I think this is maybe similar. If, if we keep hearing people say they're interested in a thing, but they're not stepping up and doing that thing, maybe there's a, a pathway that is not as straightforward as it could be, or is not as easy for people to understand and discover and follow as it could be, you know, you know, I think in both instances, maybe if we keep hearing over and over, I'm interested in X, I'm interested in X from a variety of people, that seems to suggest there's a pool of people, people who may do a set of things. So what is it that's preventing them from doing that? You know, is there, is that pathway just not clear enough for them or are there hurdles or, or, or blocks along that way? I don't see anybody raising their hand. I don't know if, you know, how to interpret the silence. Maybe you guys can speak up, but, you know, do you think this is misguided? Do you think, yeah, why not? I mean, we we kind of need to make a decision from a TSC point of view as to how we dispose of this, you know, comment slash recommendation we got from the member summit. And we could say, you know, well, been there, done that, <laughs> sorry. Or we could say, yeah, yeah, let's create a group. And I don't know anything. I mean, we, it'd be good to have some kind of an official response. Right now, my, my default would be, yeah, I feel your pain, but that's just the way it is. Nathan. Uh, I, I agree with uh, what you've expressed, Arno, and that uh, the community is going to do what the community is motivated to do. And if we can make the charter better reflect that reality um, and that helps more people come and contribute, I think that's great. Um, but I'm not too worried about the specifics, the, the particulars of the wording, um, because uh, regardless of what the charter says, it's the volunteers that show up inside to do work that make the difference. So, you know, I think it, any changes we make here, the focus should be on, you know, how do we make that community better? All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Otherwise, I guess we can close on this. I don't know where that leaves us in terms of the second point, but Brian, what do you suggest? Do you have um, any idea? <laughs> well, I do go back to like, like, let's, I wonder if there's something we can learn from other communities. What's the right structure for that learning? So maybe the right thing for us to, as staff to think about is ways that we might, um, bring some of these observations from other communities into our work streams here, you know, maybe in the form of special guest presentations to the TSC on the topic of how other communities manage this, how do you manage scope, uh, you know, and, and convergence versus optionality, um, uh, or things we can forward onto the list uh, that people can read at their leisure. Um, uh, if people don't mind us uh, kind of dropping stuff in like this, that might pr uh, prompt some other conversation. That's great. I don't know that it, this is one of those solvable things, I guess, and maybe we just report back to the members you know um that on this item you know it was hard to find um you know any passion in the tsc community around uh solving this conclusively so um i i push it back on the members if this is something you want solved um then uh we need you to we need, we need some folks to step up on the t on the membership side all right i can do that sounds good thank you mm -hmm. okay so I guess with that, we can uh, call it a day and close the meeting. Any other thoughts? All right, I guess not. Well, thank you all for joining. Talk to you next week. Goodbye. Thanks everyone. Thanks, bye. bye.